Bob Fryer here in the Apex studio. I want to thank our sponsors, Repairify and Great Water 360 Auto Care. We've got uh, Jim Fish with us right now. He is the president of Diagnostic Network. It's good to have you here, sir. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. A word that is being thrown around in pretty much every industry right now is artificial intelligence. Um, is, is it already showing up in the, in the auto care aftermarket uh, industry? Yeah, it sure is. In okay. fact, in May, we introduced the industry's first AI-powered advisor who we call Aiden, which is, stands for really AI at Diagnostic Network, Aiden. Oh, okay. And Aiden is an advisor to working technicians. We have 25,000 tech working technicians in our community. We grow by between 70 and 80 more each day, and they interact with Aiden to help them solve problems faster. Okay, there are concerns though that there are shortcuts being taken. Is, is that a concern or? Do the benefits outweigh any concerns? No, in fact, I think it's the wrong question is being asked. Okay. A venture capitalist, Mark Andreessen, said the, the wrong question is being asked of AI. People, for example, say, will AI eliminate, say, Ron Howard? As the need director, for Ron right. Howard. Right. The, the, the question is, what can Ron Howard accomplish with AI as a tool? So will AI replace a technician? That's the wrong question. The right question is, what can a great technician do with AI mm -hmm. as a tool in his hands? Okay, you know, I, I have a couple of kids in college and a lot of them are using AI to write term papers and my the question that I'm asking is, are they getting the proper education by doing the work for themselves? This is the shortcuts that I'm talking about. Is that a concern, a, a legitimate concern? No, I don't think so. In fact, there was a study at MIT that looked at the use of AI and it found that people could do tasks faster but the skill difference still allowed you to magnify your quality as well. So it doesn't make a low-skilled person a high-skilled person. It makes a low-skilled person a little bit more skilled and much, much faster. Okay. So there still is the learning and experience process. It is a tool. It is another tool for the technicians to use. Much like the internet became a tool, much like Google became okay. a tool, much like computerized diagnostics became a tool, so they're not calibrating points on a vehicle anymore, yeah. they're using scan tools. But there are trade-offs. I mean, the internet became a tool, but it, it, yes, we have expanded completely, but in many ways with the internet, we have become people on our phones, on our computers, and we're connecting that way, but there is a human touch that was lost in that process. So while you say, yeah, it's all going to be great, there are some trade-offs, right? Yeah, it's a time saver. Okay. It's, it's very simply a time saver. It, no different, I, I'm a professor at the University of Michigan, and I talk about the ability of technology to, to create value in four ways. It creates a positive emotion, okay. there's risk mitigation, things like insurance, there is um, reduced costs and reduced time. And I tell the story of in the 1970s, and my parents were gonna go to visit Mount Rushmore, and we got a AAA trip kick. Yeah, okay. We had to make an appointment, we had to drive there, they had to draw the map out for us, and we had to drive back. We had four hours invested in getting a map. Google Maps can do that for yeah. you nearly fair, instantaneously. Fair. So, did we really, do we really miss out on not scheduling an appointment to get a map, or is this an incredible tool that gives us something valuable? And where do you see it, like, I don't know, 20 years from now? It's hard to look into the, but, but technology is increasing exponentially. Do you see it just becoming a, a massive part of our lives in 20 Well, we're not stopping. Uh, we brought out our advisor, and today our advisor gives an answer and then goes silent. Mm -hmm. Our advisor, in the very near future, is going to be able to talk back and forth with you okay. in proper context. Also, it's going to be referencing materials that are not necessarily publicly available, so it can point to the right answer wherever that may be. Okay, so you're not worried about HAL 2001. No, you know, no, turning around and keeping no, Dave out no, of the pod. No, okay. I, I have felt, I, I get what a Google engineer says when he says it's a sentient, because you do get a feel for the personality when you're working with it every day. Right. For sure, yeah. for yeah. sure. That is the creepy part. But. All right, it was good to talk to you. Thank you so much for, for stopping by. Thank you, Appreciate thank you for it. having me. Hey, as you're out walking around Apex 23, make sure you're taking those photos and posting them to social media, but always make sure you use that hashtag Apex 23. I'm Bob Fryer in the Apex Studio.